This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Palm Sunday is probably one of the most recognizable festivals on the church calendar simply because it begins with that palm processional, that commemoration of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on the week of his crucifixion. As he enters Jerusalem, the people are excited. There is an excitement about him. They spread cloaks and branches and palms on the ground as he comes into Jerusalem, proclaiming, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, or Hoshianna, that is the cry to save us. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. These are cries that echo the psalms that they would have been singing in Jerusalem for the Passover anyway. And so they recognize in Jesus the fulfillment of prophecy, the fulfillment of the psalms, the particular prophecy that says, Lo, your king comes to you humble and sitting on a donkey. And yet, it's not all cries of excitement there in Jerusalem. I read in our reading just a little bit further, a couple verses further than the appointed verses call for, because I wanted to get the two responses to this scene in Jerusalem. On the one hand, we are told that part of these crowds who are crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, are the very same people who either witnessed or heard about the resurrection of Lazarus, and they have come out singing the praises of Jesus. And yet, there are also the Pharisees who are looking at these events, and they say amongst one another, You see, you can do nothing. The world has gone after him. You see, the world has gone after him. Indeed, there are words spoken there that are those of jealousy. They are words that react to Jesus as being a disruptor of their own authority with the people, these religious authorities and the power that they had. Jesus is also seen as the one who is disrupting the status quo relationship between the religious authorities and the Roman officials. And so perhaps there's even a little bit of fear here and what might happen amongst the people because of Jesus and the excitement that he draws. But when the Pharisees speak these words and they say, you can do nothing, look, the world has gone after him, to be sure those are words of despair. And yet, they would have the opportunity to try and put an end to this. 
It is also the tradition on Palm Sunday to read the appointed gospel year's entire Passion account on this Sunday. This year, the Passion account comes from the Gospel of Mark. And we see there that within this very same week, Jesus is crucified. And the events are set in motion uh, by one who was willing to betray Jesus. And so those religious authorities who thought you can do nothing are in fact able to arrest and falsely accuse Jesus and bear false witness against him and hand him over to the Roman officials to be crucified. It is an interesting change of scene within that one week. And we may never know uh, how it is that the, the Pharisees and the chief priests persuaded those crowds in Jerusalem to cry out to Pontius Pilate and ask for the prisoner Barabbas to be released instead of Jesus. We may never know how it is that, that uh, in the same city, within the same week, the crowds who had also cheered for Jesus, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the war Lord, now turn to cries of crucify him. How indeed do these things take place except that God the Father allows them to happen, that they are allowed in order that these events unfold so that Christ may become at once our sacrificial lamb crucified for the sins of the world, as well as our victorious Lord reigning from the throne of his cross over the world and all of creation and all the universe. There it is, exalted and glorified on the throne of the cross, that Jesus begins drawing all the world to himself. You see, said the Pharisees, the whole world has gone after him. Those are words that will become all the more true through the cross, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Well, what does St. Paul write in his letter to the church in Philippi, in, in Philippians? It's also the appointed second lesson that will be read in our worship today. Paul writes that Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, becoming humble and born in human likeness and, and taking the form of a slave. He became obedient, obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that every knee should bend and every tongue on earth and under the earth and in heaven should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So yes, through Christ's crucifixion, through his exaltation on the tree of the cross, the world is, begins to be drawn to Christ. The world does, in fact, go after him. Of course, when we look around at the world today and in our, in our societies around the world, it, that doesn't necessarily immediately ring true for us. I mean, it is easy for us to look at the world and see where the world not only has not gone after Jesus, but in fact where the world continues to reject the Son of God and deny the cross. And yet, to be sure, the cross still stands in the midst of this world that is so broken, and there, from the tree of the cross, Christ continues to draw to himself the broken sinners of the world, to come there to the foot of the cross, 
to bend the knee in repentance and confession, confessing that Jesus is Lord and there receiving the grace of the forgiveness of God and being made children of God and brought into the kingdom of God. Make no mistake that God is still about this work in the world, that the cross still stands in the midst of the world. Make no mistake that the Lord Jesus is still drawing the world to himself. Make no mistake that the world is still being prepared by God for the coming of Christ when he comes again as victorious Lord of all, when we, together with those who are living, with those who have died, having been raised on that day, will join together in singing the praises of our coming Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>